Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Amp Creator series. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over in this area, and we're I actually found a little place that will generate a village pretty much. Um, so these blocks right here, uh, they generate in the world. Now you can basically add them whatever you want but what happens is it generates a bunch of structures um, that uh, can be controlled on the density and stuff like that and there are a few issues that I've noticed with it I'm not sure if it was specific but uh, one of them was with villagers they would just kind of walk away now I'm not seeing this actually happen in this one but they did end up walking away and stuff like that. I'm not sure if there was any particular cause. They seem to be going north, which is really weird. All of them at, on that one save went north. But uh, I'm not sure what the cause is. It might just be a 1.18 bug. Anyhow, uh, there are two components for these structures. Uh, the first thing that actually generates, yeah, see, he's starting to go north. I'm not sure why he goes north, but it, it probably won't happen with custom mobs, like custom traders and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, we have, like, the foundation part. As you can see, it's kind of like a cone shape. And how this design basically works is it will kind of do its best to blend in with the uh, terrain that it basically generates on, giving it a, a kind of a look that it will... It's like a cliffside or something like that. Uh, other structures like the trees and stuff aren't taken into consideration, but that's just part of the thing that it has to kind of deal with. Uh, you probably generate them in planes and stuff that, that don't actually require a lot of um, other structures like trees and stuff, and it probably generate a lot nicer. Uh, sometimes you get terrain differences like this. Uh, this is normal. Uh, what happens is it... They're all trying to go north on this side. Um, what happens is it tries to find a block. Most likely it tried to find one somewhere around here and it basically just spawned it in. Um, that's normal. But then other times it's basically just like this and it looks perfectly like it's like it belongs there. So as you probably noticed, uh, there are two different structures here. Uh, you can add as many different randomized ones as you want. Um, there's this house design and stuff like that. And then the other one, I'm not sure why the villagers like to go north. I think it might have something to do with the design with the bells or something that I have. I'm not sure. Um, might just be in their AI because it is a vanilla mob. But uh, I, I really don't know why they just do that. They just all want to leave for some reason, which is really interesting. But... Um, yeah, outside of that, uh, there's another one that was over here. I basically spawned it. You can kind of see how they work. They start over here, and then they kind of just branch out. And it's completely random. Like, this one would have went this way after, and then this way, and probably down here. So, uh, it's random, but the only difference is they go south. So, the reason for that is... Because if they were to go ahead and go, say, north as well, then they could actually overlap each other. Now, there was two spawners here, which is um, one was over where this one started and the other one was over here. Now, there is a possibility under certain circumstances, if they do spawn too close together, that they will destroy the existing structure that's already there like they do with the trees. Um, under this case, because it was actually randomly perfectly generated, um, which was more or less a fluke because I've tested this map a few times and they have cut off other structures, but um, they can destroy other ones. Uh, the reason why I use this particular seed is because there was those two not too far away from spawn and stuff, but um, the rarity of it being... Uh, two next to each other is actually really rare so you shouldn't run into too many problems if you keep the spawn rate for the blocks at a low rate all right so with that being said um there are a building map that i should probably show you and i'll explain how the 
components actually work. Um, I will provide the build structures uh, for you guys to use for your own thing, but you can also customize the platforms and you'll have to create the other things for it, but it's pretty simple to set up. So we're gonna go into the building world where I have all the supplies set up. There's uh, three main structures for building. There is the foundation template, which is this one right here. Uh, this one has uh, no structure voids in it, so it doesn't come predetermined with structure voids. Basically what you would need to do though is you would need to replace the different types of concrete. So the gray, con uh, I think it's uh, light gray concrete, brown concrete, and green concrete with whatever blocks that you want for your structure. Then you'll need to basically fill it in with um, structure voids like I've done here. As you can see, these are all structure voids. And um, yeah, once you get that, make sure to have the selection out of the actual area. And then you'll be able to just uh, copy it, save it as a structure. You'll need a structure block for that. And what happens is the structure voids basically allow any blocks underneath the foundation to take priority and anything where the, the island is will basically um, only generate giving that kind of a feel of an extra additional cliff so there's that and then we have these platforms here there's um these ones which are basically to help kind of measure the radius of the actual structure so if you look at this size this is exactly the same size of the circle as this one right here so it just helps kind of help with the building area there's a little cross in the middle to indicate where the center of the structure or the center of the the actual platform is uh, this will also be in the download and then there is the structures that you can actually yeah. integrate now i'm not sure again why they leave the blocks uh -huh. like they uh -huh. just seem to work north they have the beds they have everything they actually need, but they just don't want to stick around for some reason. Um, might be because there isn't a bell on that one, or there's too many bells. Uh, there's another bell somewhere around here, a bell over here, but um, maybe it's just because it's not in a village. So you might want to use my trader, uh, custom trader um, example, and you'll be able to kind of make your own thing from that but um yeah uh basically build it up like this and then what you need to do is you need to basically copy this over you know inside of this structure there is a whole bunch of structure voids in the actual building area and then i've basically just gone on the outer rim of the circle and filled it in with red concrete and then what you need to do is basically go and make sure that it aligns with this structure. Say if you have a brand new structure, then you would basically align it where this is, make sure it spawns right on top. Now, because the structure voids are in the middle, that your structure won't actually get replaced. It'll just put the red concrete around. And that's basically what I've done with this. Now, as you can see, there's no structure voids in here, but you can kind of see the outline of them in the corners here so that's basically what I've done is just basically filled it in with uh, structure voids on the corners and then I've saved it as a structure as village house one and wow. there's a village house two over here so that's basically that um, again I'm not sure why they travel north for <laughs> I I've seen them go as far as um, they can until they reach water for some reason but yeah outside of that that's basically it uh, if you have another structure that you want to generate then you can basically just create another one from one of these empty platforms uh, the platform the red thing and the island will all be in the the download one thing with the island building them if you're making a custom one it needs to be an uneven number uh, this is actually really important for generating the structures not only is it better for uh, building making things out of like structures that are being built but uh, it's also required for making sure that the script works efficiently and if it's off by one then it will actually still subtract one and it'll mess up your um, actual 
uh, what do you call it, your spawning system. So it's important to make sure that it's an uneven number. As you can see here, this is an uneven number. It's directly in the middle. Uh, there is 29 blocks for this one. It goes 29 that way, 29 that way, and then 16 up. So make sure to keep count of how many blocks you go up and stuff. Uh, some advice, though, is... Um, one thing with this design is I would have probably gone a little bit thicker on the base just to make it look a little bit more better. Uh, if I were to create another one of these, I would probably set that up, but um, try to have a little bit of a thicker base. I would say like maybe four or five blocks like around the center. So that should be a little bit better for the generation. But other than that, it works really well. All right, so that's the building world. And now we'll move on to the script. All right, so there are a few blocks that we actually have in the, <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, there are a few blocks and stuff like that. We have a few procedures and uh, some conditions as well uh, for the things, but I'll cover all that in just a little minute. Uh, first thing that you're gonna need to do is actually make your block for your structure. This is important. Uh, most of these settings you can just leave up until the advanced properties, you'll need to make sure that it takes randomly. Um, outside of that, uh, you don't need to set any of the other settings. Uh, the reason why it needs to tick randomly is when you're generating it through a structure. Uh, tick rates don't actually enable when it's generating in the structure, so you have to make sure that it ticks randomly with the game and then it will automatically kick in at a random interval with the game instead of a static um, tick rate. Unfortunately, that just has to be the way it uh, is set up. And the block inventory, uh, it needs to be a tile entity, so make sure to check that box and uncheck these two block boxes right here. And then you want to set the inventory count to zero. You don't really need an inventory for this particular thing, but we do use MPT, so we need to make sure this is enabled. Uh, the other settings up until the update tick. Uh, we do have an update tick. I'll cover that in just a little second. But uh, the other thing that we have is no generation. So the only thing that we need to worry about is making sure that we have an update tick. Now because it does tick randomly, this still does run, but it's random. So we'll have to keep that in mind. I'll cover that procedure in just a little bit. Once you have done that, uh, what you need to do is you need to go in game and then you need to basically save the um, single block with a structure block to make a single block structure. And then you're gonna basically just give it a name like village spawner or something like that, whatever you want to, whatever re represents your structure the best for what you're gonna be generating. Now, if it's something like a spruce uh, spruce village or something like a, I don't know, a Casey village or something like that, you might wanna set the name a little bit more specific than just village spawner. But, um, yeah, once you have that in place, then what you can do is you can go ahead and move over to your structure generation. And then we have a couple things here that we need to make sure that we have set up. Uh, really advise keeping it at a low number. Probably don't have any more than a thousand um, for the probability of spawning. Reason being is if, if there's too many, then it could lag a lot when you're generating the structures, especially if they're really large structures. Uh, so try to keep this number below 1,000. I wouldn't advise going any higher than that. Uh, the structure group, you don't actually use this at all. So make sure that this is set to one and one. Uh, make sure that you select your village spawner block up here. The other settings uh, you want to make sure is that the structure does not generate randomly. Uh, it should be fine if it does, but it's best just to make sure that it doesn't just in case there's any conflict in the future. And then there's the structure block. Uh, this is just the default one. Most of these settings you can just leave the same. Um, the only other difference is we're making sure that it, it restricts it to a block type and then we're setting or block that we want to basically replace. Uh, this is important. Uh, I'll cover a little bit more of that in later on, but um, it needs to be set up this way. Then we also have a on instant generated. This will actually set all our settings for our structure that we generate. Uh, you can make multiple of these blocks and like different blocks and stuff like that. 
and you could basically have s different settings for different ones. You can do different sizes and stuff like that. So the instant generated um, has a couple different variables. Uh, all these you basically don't need to worry about. The only thing that you need to worry about here is if you want to set the generation type from a static structure count or a dynamic structure count. So if you want a dynamic one, basically what dynamic does is it makes it a random number of structures uh, between a certain value. Um, there, this basically controls the dynamic structure math behind it. So basically how this is basically going to work is if we want um, it to be a number, a random number between zero and 10, then we're going to basically set the structure density from, or the, the structure number, the first number here is going to be 10. The last number is going to be zero. So this last number is basically going to um, make sure that there's always a certain number after that. Now say if we want still 10 structures to have the probability of spawning, but we always want four to generate, we can always set this number to four and then we would subtract four from this, which would be six. So we'd still get that 10 structure possibility, but we would have um, always four structures that generate an, under that circum circumstance. So there's six and then four that equals 10. And then if you're using st static structures, uh, basically that will always generate a set number of how many that are gonna generate. So for example, if I wanted always tend to generate then I would set this one to 10 and I would just change the variable over on the builds left um, MBT tag to static structures and then that will carry over exactly 10 structures. Reason why there is a negative one why we're subtracting is it doesn't take in consideration of the actual starting structure so we're just subtracting one and it should always keep the exact um, number that we input here. So that's the only thing, you don't need to change that, just leave that alone. All right, so the other thing that we have is the foundation height. This is your foundation where your island is going to be built. So you wanna make sure that you write down how high your actual foundation is. Uh, it was 16 blocks when I measured it, so I inputted 16. And then we have our foundation size. So we want to make sure that it's the total width and depth of the size. So both size sizes for the width and depth need to be the same when you're generating your actual structure. So in the, our case, it was 29 for both sizes. So I inputted 29. If it's an uneven number, you're gonna run into generation issues. Make sure that it's a complete square when you're actually generating. All right, the other thing that we have here is density. This is basically how far apart the structures generate. You should be able to set it to zero and they should be able to not overlap, but um, I have it set to two. If you want it further apart, then you can basically set it to a higher number. And what this will do is it will just kind of try to push it away from the, make the random spots for where it can generate further apart. So if you want it like 32 blocks away, then you could set this to 32 and it'll be really far apart from where they can possibly generate. So you can set that to whatever you want. I have it set to two, um, just so it's easier to, um, two's a good number, honestly. It does have a little bit of padding to begin with from the structure size, from the width, but um, it's still nice with a little bit extra padding. All right, so outside of that, uh, that's all for the structure. One thing that you will need to set up is a tag for your actual structure uh, for your spawn blocks. Uh, now, remember that we went into our generation, we have it to spawn on grass blocks. So we wanna do the same for this. What we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and just add a tag it should be under our own namespace and it should be a block tag and then we're going to basically use the same block that we selected here and we're going to make it into a tag so we can basically test for it later um actually i don't think i use this i might have refer changed that a little bit i'm not sure if you need that at the moment i'm going to leave that up um but at the moment 
create a tag just in case. Um, because I can't remember if I ended up going and just hard coding it in. I think I hard coded it in instead because it wasn't working. So the other thing that we have is the update tick. This is um, longer procedure, but uh, this controls where your structures are going to generate as well as some of the other properties. Now all these are basically getting called in from your conditions. I'll cover the conditions in a little bit. But uh, the most important thing is uh, the random number. So random number times 100 uh, is basically going to create a random number between 1 and 100. And this is what you're going to be using for your, um, your script down below. So down below we have a few different things we need to spawn in our foundation. So all this above here, you can basically ignore. Um, this is not too important, but when you spawn it in with the, gen like with the procedure, when you import it through this button right here, then what you want to do is you want to just kind of leave all that stuff alone. Uh, the, most, the only thing that you need to change is basically set up your procedure for your random generation script. I'll cover that next. And your structures for your platform should be set up like this and your actual random number will be basically set up through here so if you have extra structures then you want to basically go ahead and create a number um, now the highest number will always be the one that will have a higher probability so if you if you add a third one just pretend this is a new structure um, then we would have to set this to something like 66, this would be 33, and this would be an even probability of the structure spawning. It would be a 33% or one third chance. Uh, so basically what this does is if it's greater than 66, then it's going to try to generate it with that. If it's greater than 33 though, and it's not 66, then it's going to basically generate the next one. Now, if it's not 33 or greater than, then it's going to just basically spawn the last option. So you want to use solid numbers for this. Uh, I left notes here uh, explaining how that basically works. The other thing that you want to do is basically set up your random generation script. Now, this is actually really important. So whoop, um, didn't need that one. Workspace, and then we'll go into procedures, random generation. So this controls where the actual blocks get generated. A lot of this you don't actually have to fill out. Um, only the stuff at the top here is required. So the only two things that you need to do is select your spawnable block. And I'm pretty sure this tag doesn't need to be needed. But you would set your spawnable block here and then your village spawner block here. So everything else is basically already taken into account for, for the generation for 1.8 and yeah literally you don't need any to co configure anything else in this particular procedure again this procedure will already be um, in the download so make sure to grab that uh, when you link that up though what you want to do is basically just select that one from the list should be the random generation script right here or whatever one in your your list and it should show up uh, make sure that's linked up properly or, or the script won't work efficiently. Actually, it won't work at all. So make sure that's li linked up. All right, so that's the update tick. Pretty simple stuff. And then we cover the structure instance one. Then we have um, the update tick for that. The conditions are a little bit different. Uh, we'll start with the Y position ones. Now, basically how this is set up is what it's going to do is it's going to test for the height level um, around the structure. So on the corners of the structure. So there is like a square. I'll go into paint.net and I'll just kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. It's, it's easier to explain. So we have a square um, actual structure, right? So that's our square. And then what it's going to be doing is all these procedures here are going to basically test if the blocks, let me just get a larger brush size. So if the blocks um, in the middle and the corners are a certain 
certain conditions. Basically, it's going to be trying to find what one is the highest structure point. So it can basically get that number. So it's going to be testing in all these locations around your uneven square. And reason why that's happening is so it can basically test how far away the block is from the the highest one. So it's going to try finding the highest location uh, difference between the blocks. So in this case, this one over here on this side. So if you have your structure here, your your and there's a higher cliff side here, it's always going to get the coordinates of this block here because it's a higher one. Uh, the lower ones are basically ignored. So that's basically what's going on with this script is just, just testing for each corner around the actual structure and then it's finding the highest one right here. So that's basically what's going on there. The reason why we need a whole bunch of them is one, it saves um, the script from being too long. It will be more compatible with uh, lower end computers that have problems with uh, large, large script. And um, yeah, it's just, it makes it a little bit easier to sort through. So again, you'll have to only set up the uh, local spawn block, everything else is taken into consideration and autom automatically determined. So this is the only block that you actually need to set up. And there are all those different uh, corners like I showed you before. So there's the, um, all, all of them. They're different based on the position that they're in. So this one has a little bit different math. Um, integrated in it so it's going to be a little bit different but you will have to set up the spawnable block that you want it to generate on uh, just keep that in mind so all these are different procedures but they have um, the same method of basically what it's doing once you have those set up then what you need to do is create your hillside condition basically what this one will do is it will basically go ahead and try to determine what um, what side is actually higher or no, pardon me, uh, what it's going to do is it will try to determine if the hillside is over a certain amount of blocks, if it's going to be over, I think 16 or something like that, the foundation height, then it will try to spawn it halfway into the cliff. I don't know if this actually works, honestly. I haven't seen it happen, but um, I would still set it up because it's required, right? So make sure to set that up. And that is actually all coded into a couple other things. Now you might've noticed that these conditions here are basically calling from another procedure. You'll have to set these up for all of your um, structure Y positions. So structure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight all need to be imported and called. Now. Uh, you can just basically click on it and it should come up in the list. So you would select the number and then basically import it like that. It will run the procedure and then it will basically get the return value. So that's where the other ones are basically returning the value from. Um, if we go back in here, as you can see, what we're doing here is we're returning the Y value of the actual procedure. And that gets put into another uh, procedure that we can call it from. Another thing with a hill condition is we're basically re returning a true or false statement. Uh, as you can see, it's returning true if it's um, greater than a certain number. If it's le less than though, then we're returning false. And the other thing that I should probably note is that the update tick requires the regular conditions as well, as well as the hill side one. Click on that, it should come up in the list here. So that's the only difference for the generation. Uh, I don't think there's actually anything else that I need to cover. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, really easy to set up. Try to make it as easy as possible. Um, I'll make sure to provide the texture, the um, structures, the three structures that I mentioned before, and the procedures and anything else that is relevant for the project as well as the workspace. So you guys can actually import the workspace and see how everything is set up. But um, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.